founder of The Lever and editor-at-large at Jacobin, David Sirota, joins us now from Denver. David, welcome. Hey, how you doing? And so we were, we were just joking. We're, you were gonna, you're going to tell us, you know, how the how the first night of the the four night fish run out in Denver is going. Are the streets just swarmed with fish heads out there now? Uh, I wish I was going. I know a bunch of people who are going, but uh, alas, I have more mundane things on the plate this weekend. Actually, a fish is pretty mundane. <laughs> no, not, not if you do <laughs> it right. Don't tell me. <laughs> not if you do it right. So no, but seriously, uh, so you you have you have a new piece up about the the real threat to democracy to to pull to pull on a theme that uh, Joe Biden teased at last night that is dark money uh, wrecking our wrecking our elections and and flooding its way in there. You you recently over at the lever broke the news of the largest dark money contribution. Uh, to, made to a political organization in American history. Uh, l let's let's talk a little bit about democracy, threats to democracy, uh, and the ones that we identify and the ones that our political system chooses chooses to ignore. So first, first, tell us a little bit about that that massive contribution that you guys exposed. Sure. So as you said, it's the largest known dark money donation in the history of the country. Uh, it was a uh, donation effectively of a $1.6 billion company that was put inside of a dark money group. The company was then sold for $1.6 billion, uh, a maneuver, by the way, that uh, avoided effectively up to $400 million in taxes. A Chicago industrialist named Barry Side uh, donated his company uh, called uh, Triplight, it's an electronics company, to the dark money group of a guy named Leonard Leo. Leonard Leo is the uh, Trump judicial advisor, the guy who's been running the uh, conservatives' effort to uh, shape and influence uh, the American judiciary. Uh, so Leo, who's been involved in court nominations and the like, now is sitting on top of a $1.6 billion empire uh, inside of a dark money group. Now, it's important to know, the only reason we know about the identity of the donor uh, is because uh, of documents that were uh, leaked, not because of basic disclosure laws, which underscores uh, a big point. In my view, journalists cannot do their jobs covering money in politics on a day-to-day -day basis, on a systemic basis, uh, without better disclosure laws. That right now, journalists and news organizations are relying on occasional leaks and occasional whistleblowers to tell the story of money and politics in America, that stories about money and politics right now are about the smaller and smaller portion of the American campaign finance system that is still subject to disclosure laws. But because those laws are so outdated, a larger and larger portion of that campaign finance system exists in the dark. And my point is, is that regardless of where you are on the political spectrum, I, I think we should all be able to agree that we should at least be able to know who is influencing elections, legislation, and public policy? Yeah, I was just going to go there because in the lever you have sort of a two-front battle. One is that news organizations should be fighting for stronger insights via disclosure laws. And the, the most important part of that is just everybody should be fighting for stronger disclosure laws. Maybe a, a helpful way to understand that is uh, the, the group, the Leonard Leo group that side donated to, um, it's, it's not a campaign, so it wouldn't be, you know, we don't, we're not gonna know who maxed out at $2,500, which is a drop in the bucket compared to the kind of money that Leonard Leo now, now has at his disposal. Um, so what is the difference here um, with, when you're talking about a, a dark money group? Like what could, what law could specifically target the these groups that exist maybe in the nonprofit space and the PAC space that people should know about? It's a great question. So there's a, 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 a bill in Congress right now. It's been sitting there for really for, for a decade. It's got 50 Senate sponsors. Uh, so all the Democrats, including, by the way, Manchin and Cinema. It's called the Disclose Act. And the key provisions of it are would say that 501c4 groups, which are tax exempt groups, that are, can spend on politics, that they should have to disclose publicly uh, their donors, I think it's over $10,000, in other words, donors who've donated over $10,000, on a systemic basis, the same way that candidates disclose their donors. Uh, and, and the bill also includes provisions to not allow donors to hide behind you know, shell companies and LLCs. To me, this is the most basic thing we should be expecting of our political system. And I go back to, to Watergate. Watergate was the original dark money 
uh, scandal of the modern era. Uh, remember the whole follow the money. And out of Watergate came the original disclosure laws, campaign finance disclosure laws and the like. And those disclosure laws were important, but obviously they're being uh, incredibly circumvented. And I think there's one other point that's important here, which is the Supreme Court. You know, people go back to Citizens United and they point to Citizens United, including me. Uh, they criticize it uh, for unleashing a flood of unregulated money. But in Citizens United and all the subsequent rulings from the conservative bloc on the Supreme Court, those justices have continued to say that the government definitely has the power to require transparency and disclosure. In other words, even those justices who've unleashed this flood of the money era of politics have kind of justified their rulings by saying, well, at least the government should still and can still require disclosure, that sunlight is the best disinfectant, as the saying goes. So the point is, is that lawmakers pushing for disclosure are on very firm legal ground to at least let us know who is influencing and buying our democracy. And do you feel that ground shifting a little bit? And this might also be a question for em Emily as well, because I've, I've, no I've started to see some conservative commentators say that the, you know, mean tweets, uh, you know, from mean tweets all the way up to threats on the lives of politicians mean that because the, of this new dynamic, now you actually ought to be able to spend completely anonymously for your own safety, you know, because uh, you got to stay away from, you know, the mob, the mob is, the, you know, if, if you don't want to be, you know, uh, you know, tweeted at or have people protest in your yard, then you you have the right to speak without putting your name to it. Like I, I've started to see that bubble up in some circles. Are you are are you are you seeing that get any any traction? I, look, I could I could see that that argument being made, and that's a really dark argument to take the era of dark money and say actually it needs to be as dark as possible mm -hmm. so that people don't face any kind of um, uh, public shaming or the like. But I would I would go I, I would make the opposite argument. If you don't want uh, to face uh, criticism, if you don't want to face uh, public shaming, then don't try to influence the public square, right? I mean, I underscore the idea, the word public. The public square, if it's going to be a public and, and there's going to be a discourse and a debate, I think we all have the right to know who is speaking. And you can make a choice, a big donor, a billionaire donor can make a choice to say, listen, I don't want to be publicly shamed, so I'm not going to engage in that conversation. I think this idea of being able to manipulate the, the discourse, manipulate legislation, manipulate public policy, manipulate elections, we can debate whether there should be limits on uh, on w whether money is speech. But I, I think it really should be indisputable that if you're going to speak with a giant billion dollar megaphone using money as that megaphone, the rest of the country, the people being spoken to, should have the right to know who is doing the speaking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, you know, it's, to Ryan's question, it just seems the more and more, the, I mean, the, the Nixon era, there was always money in politics, going back to the Gilded Age and beyond, there's always been money in politics. But what we see now, uh, the spending that we see now is it's just on an incredible scale, and I think the more we see that, the the more the public will be interested in knowing exactly where it all is coming from. David Sirota, thank you so much. Thanks to both of you. All right, we will be back with more Rising right after this.